Animation, one of the most popular methods of telling fantastical stories. It's a portal that allows the discovery of otherworldly tales of magic and whimsy. For many of us, it's a manner in which we escape from the monotony of everyday life. I mean, after leaving math class exhausted, there's no better way to unwind than by witnessing your favorite fictional story being brought to life. Sometimes you even wonder, what is it like to be an animator? I'm sure it doesn't involve any of those boring numbers they teach us in school, right? Surely animators don't need to partake in the use of math. Well, if you were to ask an animator on whether having an understanding of math is necessary to animate, the answer you will get will be this one. See that? Well, yeah, that's binary for yes. Allow me to elaborate. Let's start simple, without entering the world of 3D animation, where math is essentially the backbone of absolutely everything, since computers rendering 3D objects, sometimes in real time, are involved. In 2D animation, it's important to figure out a few basic things before starting the actual animation process. In the animation pipeline, we often record voice lines and music before the animation proper begins, so animators have to match the timing of certain keyframes or actions to the words of the actors or the tempo of the music. The latter elements have in very specific timing. To create TV quality animation with 24 frames per second, the animators have to divide every action into 24 fractions of a second. But not all keyframes are placed at one second intervals. For example, in an action scene that is to the beat of faster tempo music, we can decide to have the movements following the beat of the music which could hit multiple times within one second. For the sake of example, let's say the beat hits twice every second. That leaves us with 12 frames for every action. And then we could end up with irregular timings to match the beat, like every second and a half. Point is, you need a plan of attack, and that plan is not going to figure itself out. You have to solve it for yourself. For the second point, we'll talk about shapes. Oh my god, shapes. They're all fun and games until they're not. We can agree that geometry makes the basis of all art. I'm sure that you have seen at least a few paintings in your lifetime referencing the golden ratio. And that's only scratching the surface, as geometry and numbers are the basis of perspective, simplifying anatomy, the architecture of buildings, designing props, weapons, and vehicles, among other things. I think we made our point here. Shapes are absolutely essential when working on any art project, and geometry is essential to build in said shapes. 3D animation takes this to a whole new extreme. Computers don't know what things look like, so it's up to us, the people, to try to have these computers understand objects in a manner that is enough to represent them. That is done through giving them coordinates to points in a 3D space. By connecting these points, we can make lines and by having lines intersect with each other, we can represent planes and by overlapping everything together, we can form surfaces of polygons. God, we got there. Polygons are the backbone of 3D modeling. Everything is made out of polygons and the sheer number of polygons available is what determines how smooth an object looks. This is how we actually went from triangular Lara Croft to regular looking Lara Croft. The difference between them is the result of computing power, being able to render a larger number of polygons at any given time. Our current computers can render more polygons than their ancestors, so our current models tend to look cleaner or more realistic. The artists over at Pixar use this idea while rendering their 3D models to have them look as smooth and natural as their technology can muster. There's this incredible video by Numberphil that goes into more detail about the numbers behind 3D models. And speaking of rendering, there's a whole equation for the rendering process that takes into account light and how shapes affect it. We won't get into that here because it's not something that can be explained in a short format video. Just bear in mind that it can get very complicated very fast. I mean, look at this. In the topic of equations, do you all remember functions? How they can be represented by a graph or an equation? And then we had that whole thing about right triangles and their sinus and cosinus and the relation between them and all that fun stuff. I really can't imagine how those can ever be useful in 3D animation. Am I right? 
Well, it's essentially how all animation is done. Trigonometry? Really now? As I hear your size across the vastness of the ocean, let me explain. In computer animation, we move digital 3D models in a process called posing, where poses are recorded by the computer in the form of coordinates. The computer then tries to fill the gaps between these poses by creating in-betweens, representing how the computer thinks an object will move from pose A to pose B. These in-betweens can be described using a mathematical function called a spline, that can later be manipulated to give the animation a more natural movement and flow. The cosinus and sinus graphs are splines that represent the movement of a singular point through the circumference of a circle. Other splines are a representation of other types of movement. All that being said, computers will have the tendency to make a linear interpolation of motions and will always have the objects move at a constant speed. This is where manual intervention is required to make the timing of said movements more accurate to how it would be in real life and more realistic when taking into account the laws of physics. Speaking of the devil, it's Matt's favorite love child, physics. Animation is all about creating the illusion of movement and movement is ruled by the laws of physics. A fundamental understanding of these laws is essential to create a natural flowing and believable animation. Either that or you know people creating entire physics engines that will accurately simulate how objects will behave in real life without needing to actually manually animate them. Like in the game of Sea of Thieves, the waves are procedurally generated using vertex displacement following the Gerstner formula, which simulates the movement of ocean water using an overlap of sinus waves with different intervals and magnitudes. With those, you can create a surface that ripples exactly like water. Okay, those were a lot of big words, I get it. But the point is, the computer can use complex equations that are used to describe phenomena in real-life physics to recreate a simulation of them that is more accurate digitally. And that's just movement. The same principle can be applied to shading and materials and their behavior in each other's presence. We are at a point where material-based rendering is the norm, where materials behave like they are supposed to do in real life. Well, there you go. We hope we haven't burst your bubble too much with this subject, as math is absolutely integral to anything computer-related, but also is very relevant in traditional animation, especially during the planning phase. That being said, you don't need to be a computer engineer or a physicist to be able to use animation software, of course, or to be able to create wonderful and believable animations, since programming and animating are handled by separate teams. However, any understanding of these more technical subjects would only help sell the final product better and streamline the process by many folds. So, yes, you do need math for animation but creativity and artistry remain the real cornerstones on which this medium stands. Everything else is the supporting course to the main dish. In this video, we have but scratched the surface to this infinitely complicated subject. And with more ambitious projects, both in film and video games, it has only gotten bigger and more complex, as both hardware and software are only becoming more capable. So we do encourage you to do your own research on the topic and find out what magical things have been achieved. Thank you for sticking around this long. If you have enjoyed this topic, that means you're absolutely a nerd like us. So join our nerdy community by smashing that like button and carrying that momentum all the way to the subscribe one and maybe even the bell next to it. Don't forget to leave a comment telling us a fun animation fact about your favorite movie. With that being said, thank you for watching as always and see you next time.